Today, I'm going to answer the question that's on everybody's mind. It seems like, is the market going to crash in 2023? Now, before we get started, if you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell so you never miss another video, and leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what you think and uh, what you're hearing, where you're getting your information from. So guys, for this video, we're going to break down a couple terms, a couple definitions of what we're looking at, and then we're going to jump on the computer and check some of the data so we could kind of back some of these things up by what the numbers actually say. And at the end, I'm going to give you my conclusion on what I think is going to happen in 2023. So the definition that we're going to use for today to help us understand is a drop in prices of 20% or more. During the Great Recession, uh, home prices fell 55%, just to give you guys an idea of what that looked like, how big of a crash that was. But we're just gonna use 20% as a marker. Some people are saying 5%, 10% drop in home values. I consider that to be more of a correction than a crash. What causes a home crash? In, in, or what causes a crash in home values? Well, it's either a sharp increase in supply or a sharp decrease in demand. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna be talking a lot about inventory on the housing market. And I wanna make some things clear, try to break this down so it's nice and easy to understand for everybody what I mean by inventory. Inventory, really when you think about it, it is the total active listings versus what's sold in a period of time. So, uh, so right now we're sitting around six months of inventory. A balanced market is about six months of inventory. So to give you an example of what that sounds like, let's say that you have 5,000 houses on the market and then 500 sold in one week. Well, that means you have 10 weeks of inventory left. If no extra houses came onto the market in 10 weeks, you would be out of inventory. So for the sake of this argument, that's the number that we're going, uh, that's the metric that we're going to be checking a lot of. Um, and a couple more definitions, so this is easy to understand. A balanced market is about six months of inventory, about 24 weeks of inventory. If inventory is greater than six months, then you're in a buyer's market. That's where buyers can actually negotiate. Prices will start to come down. Buyers will start to make concessions. You'll see a lot more of this, right? If inventory is less than six months, then you are in a seller's market. Then you're getting multiple bids on homes because there's not enough homes to uh, go around. So there's no competing homes. So everybody sees a home, they all want that home. Uh, this you saw a lot beginning of 22, uh, end of 21, where homes were getting 20, 30 bids and offers and uh, prices were being driven up. Demand increases relative to the amount of homes that are on the market. Let's look at supply. What are the factors that determine the supply of houses on the market? So number one is affordability. Can people actually afford to own a home? Um, if not, then people aren't going to be looking for homes as much, therefore homes are going to sit. This one right here, well, I'm gonna to come back to that actually. Foreclosures, the more foreclosures that are coming onto the market, obviously there's going to be more of a supply of homes available. Builders, are builders building new homes? This is important, if they're not building new homes, then there's obviously less homes on the market. Now let me circle back around to some of these because some people think that the housing market is going to collapse like it did in 2008 because of variable rate mortgages, right? So a lot of people back in the day, they had these balloon payments. When the balloon came due, nobody could afford it. So they had to short sale or they had to get foreclosed on on their home leading to an increase in supply. So that's a factor that people think might be able to affect today's housing market. We're gonna check that out. iBuyers, hedge funds. Some people say that if people, if these iBuyers unload it all of their homes, then at one time you have a, a sharp increase in supply and therefore that's going to affect the housing market. And last but not least, but employment. So we're heading into what seems to be a recession. So the question is with jobs being lost, uh, cuts happening and unemployment increasing, are we, are we gonna see people having to sell their homes in order to survive? 
Now on the flip side, let's talk a little bit about demand. What are the factors that are going to have an effect on demand? Well, rent prices are one of them. Obviously, if rents cost more than it does to pay a mortgage, then it's going to make sense that people are going to want to purchase a home at that point in time. Affordability. Affordability really comes down to two factors. It comes down to the interest rates. There's a big difference on a monthly payment of a 3% interest rate compared to a 6 or 7% interest rate. It changes how much you can afford to pay. Because that's really what matters, not necessarily the price of the home, but what your monthly payment is and your affordability. And home prices, obviously. So if prices are high, it's going to be harder to get a home. Prices are low, it's a lot easier, obviously, right? Wages, unemployment. We kind of talked about that uh, already. If wages are going up, people have more money to spend, therefore they will have the ability to purchase. And unemployment, if people lose their jobs and they don't have jobs, obviously they're not going to be able to purchase a home. Last, consumer sentiment. So that's a big one because uh, if people are scared to purchase a home, it is going to have some sort of effect. That one's a little harder to measure, but I threw it on the board just because it is a factor that we have to take into account. So now that we have a couple definitions of what we need to look at and things we need to focus on moving into the next year uh, about a home crash, let's check and see what the data is telling us uh, and what we can expect coming into this new year. All right, guys, so let's get into some of these numbers that I wanna show you guys because I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret we're already in a market crash technically speaking by the definition that I gave you guys because prices near their peak the median price was hovering right around 490,000 and what we're seeing right now is prices end the year at around 420,000 so the question isn't when is the market going to crash the question is how far down is it going to go so by the way this data here is directly from the mls so that's where i get all of my data and i when i'm talking about home crash just to clarify as well i am just talking about las vegas because the fact is that housing markets are very localized even during the 2008 crash well majority of places were you know having steep declines in prices and lots of inventory there were areas that were also still seeing improvements in prices as in prices going up and seeing lack of inventory so it's very hyper localized so i'm going to talk about las vegas i'm going to talk about clark county uh, and this is all single family data so this is the median sales price and these are the active homes on market so to give you an idea I want to jump back in time and show you what 2008 looked like because a lot of people are saying we're going to have another 2008. So this is our uh, major newspaper here in Las Vegas. It's the Re uh, Review Journal. So this is what I want you to, to look at here. The last time we saw a substantial decrease in home prices was after the Great Recession in 2007-2008 when inventory was at an all-time high. At its peak, Las Vegas had roughly 24,000 homes listed, but less than 1,000 closings per month. That's a 24 months supply. Not weeks, 24 months. And in that time, the medium home price fell to about 50%. So this is just looking at single family residences, but you could see right now we are hovering kind of right around a six month supply in single family homes and there's only 6,500 single family homes on the market. Right now you're seeing close to, if you add this up, a little bit over, um, do, 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 looks like just a little bit over 1,100, 1,200 sales per month. So demand is about the exact same place it was back then, but the problem is inventory is so much lower. So is there gonna be a sudden increase in supply due to foreclosures? Let's ask that question. Well, it's not likely. This is back in September, but for the third, qu third quarter, Nevada had the sixth highest foreclosure rate in the nation. Sixth highest, right? With 1,241 of its 1.28 million housing units in default. But 
Let's look at that historically because that sounds terrible. By comparison, in 2007, Nevada led the nation with 3.4% of its housing units in foreclosure. The fact is that we are still below the number of foreclosures that we probably need to be at to have a healthy housing market. And even in this article here, it says that experts say foreclosures are unlikely to spike given the nation's shortage of housing units. So even if demand stays consistent where it is, foreclosures rise, those houses are going to be gobbled up. So there's no real threat of an increase in housing supply due to foreclosures. Well, let's look at variable rate mortgages. Well, variable rate mortgages, people stop doing those you know, for a multitude of reasons, there's really no reason to when you got a mortgage and you could have refinanced all the way up until about April last year and gotten 3% interest rate on your mortgage. So there's not a whole lot of people with variable rate mortgages. Actually, there is, uh, I think the statistic, this could be somewhere between 20 and 35% of all homeowners in Nevada have their house paid off completely. And I believe another 50% who aren't paid off completely are, have 40% or more in equity in their homes. So you would have to see a 40% drop or more in home prices for those people to be underwater in their homes. So there's not going to be a flood of people selling their homes because of affordability issues. Actually, quite the opposite. We're seeing a stall in homes coming to the market because of affordability issues because if you have a three percent interest rate on your mortgage you're not gonna try to turn around and get a new home at a six percent interest rate so people are what's called the locked in effect they're locked into their home and they don't see a reason to sell so there's not enough inventory coming to the market right now so our price is going to drop for that reason it's not looking likely the last reason that we're going to look at is an unemployment here. So this one actually I do find kind of interesting. Back in 2008, January of 2008, unemployment was at 5.5%. And you see by the end of 2008, it was all the way up to 9.2%. So there was a dramatic increase in unemployment. Now, fast forward to today, November of last year, our unemployment is at 5.6%, right? So the question is, is that going to rise? More than likely it will. What effect will that have on the housing market? It depends on the rise, I suppose. So nationally, if you have a huge recession like we did here, then you might see us come up to these numbers, which could have a, an, an impact on the housing market. But the likelihood of that happening, I think, is still very slim. Jobs excuse me the jobs report just came out recently saying that there was more jobs added nationally than there was the month prior so the housing or the the uh, the um what is that called the labor market is actually still very strong so let's flip over to the demand side is there any reason to believe that we're going to see a tremendous decrease in demand from what we currently have and the answer is no because right now we're our demand is still fairly low let's look at it this is daily show you all this chart here so these are daily numbers of houses coming to the market every day and houses going under contract every single day as well. So back here is where the interest rates start being raised and you could see that people were trying to jump out and see what they could get for their homes while the prices were still high, which was leading to a pretty dramatic increase in inventory while interest rates going up led to less people being able to afford a home leading to a decline in demand. Whereas this, in a normal sales cycle, would look more like it would go up here and then come back down here during the winter time. But one thing I do want you to notice is right around this time here, over the past month, we've seen a much more congruency 
in demand and supply. So I think we are right where we're going to be. And the reason being is because you have people that are, there's really one segment of the market that I think is uh, buoying this housing market. And I think that is millennials because millennials are coming into their later years. They're getting into their thirties. They're having families, they're settling down. Uh, they're getting more experience in their job and actually wages increased last year even though with inflation real wages decreased you still have people have more money and with having more money and prices coming down you're going to see more of these millennials and first-time home buyers having the ability to get into a home so to put a bow on it here is my prediction for 2023 i believe that uh, Barring a sudden and dramatic increase in unemployment and a deep recession, we are going to see exactly what you're seeing right now, which is uh, basically the prices that you're going to have right now are basically the prices that are going to be near the end of the year. Maybe a little bit this way, maybe a little bit this way, but not dramatic enough to make that big of a difference. That being said, if you are a buyer, now is a fantastic time to start looking for a home because homes are sitting longer. So every now and then you'll find that right jewel, that gem, and it's a great time to take advantage of sellers needing to make concessions to be able to get their homes off the market. To be able to get their homes off the market. Hit my water bottle there. If you're wondering what you can get in a home right now, give us a call today, shoot us a text, and we'd love to help you out. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, click the like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you disagree, let me know. If you agree, let me know. I'd love to hear it either way. Have a great day.